We've been incredibly busy the last few weeks keeping up with spring shipping and now local bear root sales. And this morning I'd like to take some time on a quiet, bird-filled, mild Sunday morning to take a wander through the garden without any particular agenda or specific thing I want to highlight and just basically do a, a meandering early spring wander through the garden. And so maybe you'll want to join me. Now that we're over that first real initial hump of spring, my hope is to start making more videos. I want to focus on people's propagation, like very low tech, easy uh, things to propagate in the garden this spring. But it's just been hard to keep up with the demands of the business and uh, making videos at the same time. So thanks for your patience there. So I'm wandering around in our little backyard garden. Folks that have uh, watched this channel for a while are very familiar with this. I'm at uh, our half acre site and we're on the southern half of this. So the house is just behind me here to the north of these gardens. We'll take a look in that greenhouse one of these days and do an update on that. It's been working nicely. You can see the greens growing. They're starting to really wake up. In fact, a lot of the plants are bolting in there. So we'll be swapping those out for other uh, warmer plants soon enough. We're really moving into spring here. But I cleared away the compost. We were doing the PEX circuit, running hot water into a tank in there. That worked decently well. And now that we don't need that as much, hey, I see Sasha in there. We're going to get her in some videos soon, uh, sharing notes about all the different amazing spring cooking work that she's doing. So look for those. But anyway, so the PEC circuit's been pulled out. It's been piled up and we'll take that away at some point soon. And I've spread a lot of that compost out to gardens nearby. And so we'll spread these out soon, get them really flattened and then covered in a light seed starting mix and use those as very low tech bottom heat starting beds for warmer season things. Like maybe we'll put some peppers and tomatoes to start with this. There's a little bit of radiant heat still in that compost. So it's kind of fun to have these piles that will be beautiful finished compost by the fall. By the time we're kneading root crops, carrots and beets, it should be very mellow, but for now it's got some heat that we can work with. And overarching theme in the garden right now, we're really focusing on moving as much of the sawdust from our driveway, wheelbarrow load by wheelbarrow load back here to renovate our walkways. We got uh, 37 yards, which ends up being around 200 wheelbarrow loads. So half of that goes into the chicken yard to bulk out their composting system, and the other half goes to these walkways. And it makes for such a lovely, weed-free, crystal clear set of paths. You can see what we'll do is you come in on an existing path, dump a wheelbarrow load, and then very high-tech stuff here we just basically scuff as we're walking until it's spread out. <laughs> this way, there's lumps all over the place and then eventually it'll all be spread out and smoothed out without having to rake it or fuss over it too much. And trying to renovate both the walkways with the sawdust and then take compost from the chicken area and bring it to bulk out beds, some of the more aged compost. So you can see here, just on the north side of this high tunnel, I've gone through and I'm setting in rows of, these are hardwood arctic kiwi cuttings that I got from a fellow up in Maine. Uh, used the bottom heat propagator in the garage to get them to start rooting and then set them out so they can grow for the season. And this way I've got mulch, boop, right from the walkway. I can grab a little and use it. Wherever there's mulch in a bed, we now know there are either plants to preserve or keep an eye on, or if there's a thin layer of mulch, we know it's where we've seeded crops out. So here I've seeded out Good King Henry, here I've seeded out Hablitzia. So these are both perennial spinaches and they're partial shade loving plants, just like the Arctic Kiwi. So they'll use the filtered sunlight that comes through the high tunnel to their advantage. We might use some of these spaces that haven't been seeded out for annuals like cilantro or parsley that would want to stay cooler and less sunny during the heat of the summer. I'll get a little work done while I'm filming. Speaking of Good King Henry, it's a little preview for a video I want to be making 
sooner than later. This is Chinopodium bonus henricus, although I think they just changed the Latin name, but that's the one I like, so I'm sticking with it for now. Perennial, super hardy uh, green. It's waking up. We're in early April, and it's very early in the season. In fact, we're just now starting annual spinach seed, and here we are out in the garden where Good King Henry is waking up enough that once we get more populations of these growing, we should be able to start harvesting them very soon. This is on par with the timing of dandelions and nettles, which are some of the earliest greens in a cold landscape. What I want to do is share some notes on how we figured out ways to propagate this plant. So stick around for that or keep an eye out for that sooner than later. Uh, we figured out how to grow them from seed pretty reliably and also am learning how to take divisions from them. So that's fun. Another incredibly beautiful spring. Early, early green is this Hablitzia. Uh, Caucasian mountain spinach. It's a vine. Zone 4 hardy vine. These little tenders, you crack them off and cook them and they're better than spinach, I think. They're really lovely this time of year. And they love the shade. And so here they are growing amongst some ramps that we planted in. So rather than digging up ramps to eat them, if we go into a wild space and we find a huge thicket of ramps, sometimes we'll dig a, just a few and bring them back to plant out in our landscape so we can have our own wild patches here that we can harvest leaves from. But we've got this monster old apple that will be a very, very deep source of shade soon enough. And it's kind of neat to have these perennial, early ephemeral, spring ephemeral, um, onion garlic family greens along with perennial spinaches right under here and this will become a huge wall of vine we'll look at this later in the season some pretty wonderful plants out in the world that we can be experimenting with in cold climates first week of april and there's that much greens from an established hablitzia in what will be the shade of an overstory tree today looks like it's going to shape up to be a lovely day a little bit of clouds here or there for where we live to get direct sunlight. <laughs> Any time from November through April is pretty special. And we'll get some direct sunlight from there. Um, our plan is to go up to the main nursery for the day and start planting some of the tree seeds that have been buried. We'll do an update video on how we've buried thousands and thousands of tree seeds this winter in the chicken yard. Um, but here we are in the main garden and again, you can see what we're focusing on right now, while it's still cold enough, still early enough that we're not very much deep into planting out yet, is applying compost on our permanent raised beds, applying sawdust in the walkways to really define things. And it's fun to help visually pop some of these interesting garden spaces. Some of them are very functional and reflect how water moves in the space. Some of them are just crazy squiggles and snakes and swirls and circles. Uh, from above, it just looks like these random splotches of darkness, but they're all waiting to become fertile places for us to grow crops. One theme that we've touched on in the past that I think we're going to go a little bit, uh, a little bit deeper with this season is the idea of having beds that are a little bit on the wider side. So here's a bed that runs east-west and it might be almost five feet wide in the middle here, which is not super convenient to access the center. And so a pattern, well, one thing is the larger, more contiguous a bed is, the easier it is to keep weeds out overall because there's less to creep in from the sides. With deep sawdust, it's a little bit less of an issue, but it's hard to access things. And so one design layout that we're exploring more and more is almost having like a zone two uh, set of crops in the center and a zone one on the edge. So what that means is in this case, we've committed the center of this bed to hardwood cuttings of sea buckthorn that were on bottom heat, along with some interesting elderberry cuttings. These are a purple leafed variety. And so they can grow in the center. We don't have to harvest. It's not like a lettuce where we're coming out and cutting every single day. So they can grow in the middle. We can reach them awkwardly once in a while to a you know weed or add mulch. Here we've got some uh, kales and collards that overwintered in a nice way. So we're, we've planted them back out in the center of this bed so they can grow on the season, make flowers, and we can collect seed for varieties of brassicas that are able to overwinter in our zone 5b. 
which is pretty special and not super, super common. And then what that does is it leaves the edges as places that we can seed out for crops that we're going to access more often. So that's where the spinach and the lettuces can go. That's where the cilantros and the parsleys and that kind of thing, where we can come out or Sasha can come out with scissors and be able to harvest without having to lean in a lot. So the wider we go with the beds, the more we differentiate the interior as being perennials or nursery or less frequently accessed and the edges as being about our more frequent access. And that seems like an interesting concept and so far pretty functional. A little more work here. There we go. Nettle Island is waking up in a real way. This will be a major source of greens for us very soon. I'll save the rest of that for another video where Sasha can show how she harvests from this. But we eat nettles all spring, most meals. They're amazing and wonderful, and we love you nettles. There's still a lot more to be done with shovel work and mucking work, harvesting silt. You can see this one dominant vein that is not mulched with sawdust. It needs to remain open because this is kind of like the main release valve for excess water whenever it rains. It's where the landscape wants the water to go somewhat, although it's these sharp turns with little dig outs so that there's silt deposits all throughout, but I need to actually harvest that silt and get it up on the beds. Otherwise they lose their functionality of collecting soil in this space. But we're on such a wet site that if we don't have release valves for moisture, we can be in a lot of trouble, even with like a half inch of rain. It's kind of crazy. More areas to be harvesting silt. And see, I dug down a little bit deeper here, so we've got standing pools for sediment to fall out. And I'm learning to, uh, in areas right around these settling pools, it's nice to put deep layers of hay over wherever it's weedy. And then as we harvest the muck, we can pop that right on the hay. And that layering of silt, hay, silt, hay, breaks down into just incredibly beautiful soil over time. It looks rough now, but come fall, this will be just about the best soil we could imagine. On another bed, this one's almost six feet wide, seven feet wide. So we'll go for about three feet of bed in the center for perennial nursery. And then two feet for lovely cut and come again, frequently used annuals, frequent annuals. Maybe some stones strategically placed so I can awkwardly jump through the middle once or twice a season. The ponds are waking up. Cattails should be popping pretty soon. The frogs are starting to find partners and make piles of little gummy, gummy dots, AKA children. That's not bubble tea. That's babies. And that's probably enough of a meandering wander for this morning. I should get on to doing some work spreading more sawdust, AKA scuffling my feet as I look at stuff. I hope this video finds folks as healthy as can be, as engaged as possible with wherever you are, making connections with the landscape that you have hopeful access to or relationships with people so you can get access to some landscape. I've been finding it so nourishing and supportive and reassuring to be extra involved in our gardens, in our goals this year, uh, really helps keep, not to say to keep distracted is not the right word. I think to avoid the distraction of following the news more than is helpful. So I hope that uh, you're out there doing wonderful things and keep in touch. Let us know what you've been up to this spring. Thanks for wandering with me in the garden this morning. Take care. What you up to? Harvesting some of the lesser celandine for it to put in a soup. Those are edible? Yeah, if you cook them. <laughs>